All right, so you wanna learn how to distribute your music. Well, I'm gonna be going over three things in this video that you absolutely need to do to properly get your music out to the masses. Welcome back to another episode of Musician Mastery. I'm Daxton Page. And a lot of people think when it comes down to distributing your music that it's a one little trick thing that you do. It's like, oh, you get it out on Spotify and then boom, you're done. It's actually a little bit more sophisticated than that. Don't worry, it's nothing too crazy complicated. It's something anybody on this uh, video could do. But I'm gonna be showing you three proper things that you need to do to make sure that you have the most effective distribution of your music possible. The first little thing that I'd recommend that you take care of and make sure that you distribute your music to are the free sites. Okay, these are absolutely important as well. And a lot of people sleep on them. They think of things like Bandcamp, SoundCloud, YouTube, and they don't think of those as really valid places to distribute your music. They don't even really consider it distribution. It absolutely is distribution. It's getting your music on multiple platforms to be heard. And that's the key element of distribution, okay? So try out some free sites. Figure out which ones work well for you. There are some places like SoundCloud where they don't really charge any kind of fee if you post a song. Um, there's people like Bandcamp who will take a percentage of uh, what you earn, but you can sell your excuse me, you can sell your songs there as well. There's other companies like that that you should check out and maybe put them on both. My band, for a while there, we were just putting. Basically, we figured out what is every social platform that exists in Kinkira, that my, that's my band, can we get on every single social platform? And that included things like Bandcamp and SoundCloud and another one that isn't as popular, I almost am hesitant to mention it, but that's Reverb Nation. How many of y'all remember Reverb Nation? The reason I'm not a huge fan of Reverb Nation is because I feel like mostly other bands check it out. So it's not really something that's super valid for trying to get new fans, it's just something where you're trying to show other bandmates, or not other bandmates, but other bands in your area what you're doing. Um, so to me it's not that effective, but it is a place that you can go for free, host your music, okay? So free sites are absolutely undervalued, but they can actually play a big role. Things like YouTube are very big platforms, and if you can have something catch on on YouTube where the algorithm starts sending it to a lot of people, that can be a great way to get exposure for your music. All right, the second thing that you need to check off your list as you're distributing your music, and this is one I'm sure most of you have heard of if you're watching this video, if you're you know interested in the subject of distribution, is use a distribution company. All right, distribution company. What is this? Okay, these are companies like CD Baby or DistroKid or TuneCore, right? These different companies, what they do is they will distribute your music across all the big platforms. So when you think of things like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Deezer, Tidal, all these different types of streaming platforms, these are the companies that are gonna help you get your song to those sites. Now, there is a trade-off when it comes to working with these companies, and it's, it's not free. You either have two options. There's two types of these companies that I think out, that exist out there. And the first type of company is what I call the flat fee service. Flat fee services are my favorite, um, personally, because what happens is you pay an annual fee, and it's a set amount, and then what happens is they give you 100% of your royalties. So they don't take any percentage away from your royalties, at least the, uh, the performance, I believe, or the mechanical, I can't remember off the top of my head. But what you get, is 100% from them, but you pay them annually to keep your song up on those streaming services. Now, the other type of company is a percentage-based company. And what they do is they don't really charge you that much annually to keep your song up on their servers, but they're gonna take a tiny percentage from your music as well. Now, you may be asking yourself, I don't know which one 
to pick. Should I pick a company that does the flat fee? Should I pick a company that does the percentage? What would you recommend, Dax? Well, don't worry about what I would recommend. Let's ask someone who's actually a really, really huge professional that's worked with people like Ozzy Osbourne. There's a guy that I'm really good friends with named Phil Susan, who was the bass player for Ozzy Osbourne back in the 80s during the Ultimate Sin album cycle. And he actually is the writer, the songwriter who wrote the song, Song in the, <laughs> song in the Dark. Shot in the Dark is the name of the song, excuse me. Say song one more time, right? <laughs> so Phil wrote Shot in the Dark, and he's a very, very smart musician. He's been in this game for a while, and he told me a secret when I was younger. And he said, Dax, listen. You don't need to worry about, is it TuneCore, is it CD Baby? Because the answer is both. Let me explain. He says, in the beginning of any album cycle or any release that you put out, the most views or listens that you're going to have over those particular pieces of music are in the first year. So that means in the very first year of the release, from the let's say you released a single or an album on January 1st, so all the way until the next January 1st, you can expect to see the most of your revenue for that particular piece of music then. So for the first year, you wanna sign up with a distribution company that lets you keep all the royalties possible, right? You pay one little flat fee up front, and then you get to collect 100% of your revenue from that first year. Now the next year and the every year after that, you're probably not gonna have as many people view that music as they did when it very first came out. So right then, you're gonna be making like micro pennies. So why not split the royalty payments when it's micro pennies? So what you do is instead of having to pay a bigger annual fee every year and not making as much every year after the first year of the release, you can go sign up with CD Baby or whoever where they take a percentage of it and you don't have to pay as much. So you're not making as much already, so you might as well split the pennies and collect as much revenue as possible from that first year by just using a flat fee service. So just to recap that strategy, you start out with the flat fee service, and then after the first year, instead of renewing with that flat fee service, you sign up with a percentage-based service. Hope that was a helpful tip for you guys to 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 maximize. Sounded like I was in Family Guy. So you can maximize your profits. All right, so that is point number two. Hey y'all, thanks for watching the video up to this point. If you do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button, as well as the notification bell, it would really mean a lot to me. It's a good way for me to kind of figure out how good of value I'm providing for you guys. So if you feel like you're learning a lot, make sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, now back to the content. All right, we're gonna go ahead and jump to the third and final thing that you need to do to properly distribute your music. And that is, you need to have a marketing plan. Okay, so what a lot of musicians do, and they get very frustrated by these results, what they do is they release a song after promoting it for maybe a week, right? So they promote a song for a week and they assume like, hey, I marketed the, you know, I marketed the song or the album or whatever it happens to be. Isn't that a proper, you know, campaign? No, it's not. Okay. So what you need to do whenever you're getting this album, this single, whatever it happens to be, set up and about to be distributed out to the world and to the public, you need to put together a marketing campaign that builds hype and awareness around this particular release. So what I would do is get the release recorded and ready to be distributed and maybe even scheduled with the distribution company months ahead of time, probably three or four months ahead of time if you can manage that. And then in those next three or four months, since you know that there's a date that that is gonna be released, that entire time between the three months out and the day of the release, you're gonna be building up hype for that release so that whenever it does go live, everyone is checking Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, they're checking everywhere to make sure that they can go find whatever it is you just released, okay? But most people don't do this. Most people don't have a plan. I wanna tell you about uh, the problem that I had one time when I was trying to release a song, like, like we didn't do any sort of marketing prep. We just kind of went, it's out there guys, go check it out. 
some people were just kind of like, oh, oh, okay, I guess you got new music out. And it kind of confused the fans more than like surprised them and made them happy. Now we didn't uh, initially get as many views on the song as we wanted to, but luckily we were on tour when the song was released so we could promote that song every night when we were on stage and it ended up doing pretty well for us because people would go check us out on YouTube and then the song would be there. But if we were smart, we would have promoted that song months ahead of time to really build up the pressure of not only the release of the single, but performing the single live. Because we, uh, we were about to go on tour with a big band at the time, and we should have leveraged the fact we were going on tour with them to build hype around the song. That was a big mistake that we made. We didn't make that mistake again whenever we tried to release a single right before a tour. So always take advantage of having months ahead of time that you can plan and start to strategize and see how you can make an effective marketing plan for whatever it is that you're about to distribute, okay? So this is actually like probably the most key thing that I'm talking about today. Because when it comes down to it, this is easy. You just take your file of your song and you upload it to some free sites. This one is easy because you upload the file, maybe you upload the artwork and upload a couple of like pieces of information like the lyrics and then you have to have like who the writers were and all that kind of information. But outside that, that's like the most difficult thing of both of these points is just putting in information on the computer, which is not a big deal. Having a marketing plan is a little bit more in depth because you have to know the end date and where you are right now and every little thing that you're gonna do along the way to help promote that release so when it does go live, it's got the biggest, most like, like, like hype possible for your release. You wanna think of like Hollywood. What do they always say? Next summer <laughs> or coming next winter. They never say in four weeks. They never do that, right? They're always saying next summer, coming next fall. They're always building hype way ahead of time. And that's because that is gonna give you the most effective release day possible. So don't just try to release it. You know, like, oh, I just recorded a new song and I think it sounds good. Here you go, fans. That's lazy. And that's not gonna give you the results you want anyway. You wanna get as many people, as much traffic to your page as possible if you're gonna be marketing or dropping a new song, a new single, a new music video, whatever it happens to be. So yes, I'm sure you guys have seen these two points potentially out there on the interwebs. Like, hey, go post it on for, uh, for free on Bandcamp or SoundCloud. Or you've seen, hey, go to TuneCore or DistroKid or CD Baby or whatever it happens to be. I'm sure you've seen those pieces of advice and they're important things to know. But this to me is the most important thing because you can do both of those things and have a terrible release. Yes, you distributed your music, that's true, but no one's really getting it except the people that are like diehard fans of yours. And if you're starting out, that's probably not a lot. And that's okay, you'll get there, you'll get more people, but when you're starting out, you need to put the odds in your favor as much as possible, okay? So, have a plan. Sit down months before you think you're gonna release this, and if you thought you were gonna release it next week, then put it off. If you haven't told anybody or made an announcement, put it off. Push it off a month or two, maybe three, so that you can actually prepare a nice marketing campaign. And in the meantime, some people may be thinking, like, Dax, what do I do to help build hype? Well, you can do interviews. You can do sneak peeks and clips of the song. You could also do behind the scenes clips. All these type of things are little ways that you can build up hype around the release. Maybe you do a little documentary type thing where it's like, commentating the song or whatever it happens to be. There's tons of different strategies that you can implement to help build hype for a release. But the point is, is you gotta have a plan, okay? And you gotta get some interviews planned and do all kinds of things to really make your release the best it can possibly be. Instead of just like, no pun intended for what I mentioned earlier, just having a shot in the dark, just thinking, oh, well, I put it out on YouTube and I distributed it with TuneCore, I'm done. You know, look out everybody, here comes my number one hit, my number one hit. Look out, here it comes. And then what happens? Nothing. <laughs> because you just distributed it. Yeah, it's on those sites now. How many artists have songs on Spotify? Like almost millions, I would say millions of artists probably have songs on Spotify at this point in time. So 
that doesn't do much for you. What does something for you is having a marketing plan. And if you don't understand marketing, there's ways that you can learn it. I'm gonna give you guys a free gift for watching this video that's gonna help teach you a couple strategies about how to market yourself and how to actually find an ideal audience and what that looks like, as well as proper mindsets that you need to have to become a professional musician in the first place, okay? So if you're interested in that, please click the link in the description and you can also um, click um, excuse me, you can also go to musicianmastery.com slash podcast. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this content and you learned how to distribute your music properly, okay? Hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you on the next video.